In today's video, I'm going to show you the top 10 performing stocks so far this year, and using my 25 custom technical and fundamental indicators, I'm going to perform some fundamental and technical analysis on them all, and then rate them all as either cooking, meaning I think they potentially have further to run this year, or I'm going to rate them as cooked, meaning I think their best days are behind them and they could potentially finish this year lower. Just as a reminder, this video is not financial advice. Please do your own research before making any investment. And so I don't waste your time and you know what to expect. Here's a list of the 10 stocks I'll be covering. And please note, these are only liquid large cap stock. I've filtered the entire US stock market for companies above 25 billion market capitalization and at least 500 million in daily traded value of share volume. And make sure you stay to the end of this video to see my ratings for each stock and if you don't agree with one of my ratings, then be sure to let me know in the comments below this video along with your reasons why, as I'm sure you might be surprised at what rating I give to some stocks that go against the current crowd sediment. And without any further ado, let's dive right into it. Coming in at number 10 is Marathon Petroleum. They're a $72 billion market cap company coming out of Finlay, Ohio, and they're focused on the refining and marketing of oil, with their stock currently up 35.21% year to date. And just performing some technical analysis on MPC. First, we'll start off with the clean weekly chart. We can see that's obviously in a well-defined clear uptrend for a couple of years now. Going down to the daily chart, it too looks good. We can see on my trend strength indicator, it is blue and positive. Had a good breakout from recent earnings, beating expectations by 81%, charging higher on volume. And so technically, it is in a strong uptrend. And looking at the fundamentals, at my quant factor score indicator, apart from growth and overall value, everything else looks pretty good and MPC. Even though it's had a great run, it's still trading a little bit below fair value, has a really high shareholder yield of 22%, and I would say that's why it's performed so well ever since shareholder yield dramatically increased in late 2021. And for those of you who don't know what shareholder yield is, it's basically an improved and modern day version of dividend yield, since it looks at not only dividends, but how much stock a company's buying back and how much debt they're reducing, all as a percentage versus the market cap, and that's what's known as shareholder yield. And many academic research studies show that companies that have a high shareholder yield significantly outperform those that don't over time. And I'm proud to be the first person that has brought the shareholder yield indicator to TradingView. And if that number is above 5%, then it'll be automatically colored green. So 22%, that's a really high shareholder yield for MPC. Its business quality score is good too here at 11. And stock crash risk is reasonable at 5.9. Also, it's important to look at the sector a stock is in. And Marathon Petroleum is in the large energy sector fund, XLE. And that too has just recently broken out. We can see trend strength has gone positive and so that's a good sign for the stock as well so overall weighting all the evidence technicals and fundamentals on mpc i'm going to give it a rating of cooking meaning i still think this has further to run for the remainder of this year coming in at number nine is the very popular palantir the 50 billion dollar market cap company out of denver colorado with their stock price currently up 35.75 percent so far this year, and they offer AI software to both the government and the corporate sector. Starting off with a clean weekly chart, we can see they were hit really hard in 2022. They have based out, accumulated, and looks like we're in a stage two advance here. Switching over to the daily chart, although we recently had a good quarter, they beat a little bit by 5% on expectations. We broke out on volume, however, we seem to have lost momentum. Just on the last trading day of this week, Thursday, we closed down 6% below the 50 day VWAP, and the trend strength has gone back to negative and orange, meaning it's lost its momentum. Looking at the relevant sector, ETF bots, even though it's still technically in an uptrend, it too is losing momentum here and could potentially be consolidating. Looking at the fundamentals on Palantir, they aren't too great. Apart from growth and quality factors, which come in at average, everything else is pretty much bad. My stock fair value indicator, has fair value around $13, which is well below the current $23 stock price. Shareholder yield is negative as they don't pay a dividend and they're likely increasing their debt and the amount of shares or a combination of the both. Business quality score pretty low and stock crash risk is quite elevated as well. And so even though we have some momentum here, given that it is a $50 billion market cap company, it only did $2.2 billion in revenue last year, meaning its price to sales is over 20. And I know this is really popular and not many people may like my rating on this, but I have to give it a rating of cooked based purely on valuation. I know this is most likely a great long-term company. They have a close relationship with the government, promising products and AI. However, you're really paying for it here 
at a $50 billion market cap. So I think it has the potential to have a significant pullback for the remainder of this year. Coming in at number eight is Disney with a market cap of $224 billion. Headquartered in Burbank, California, their stock is up 35.8% year to date. And we all know what Disney do. They have probably the best content catalog in the world. Some say the most strongest and powerful brand in the world. They make movies, run theme parks, sell a lot of merchandise, own ESPN, and many other entertainment and tourism related assets all around the world. Starting off with a clean weekly chart, we can see they'd been in a significant downtrend from 2021 all the way up to late last year. We look to have bottomed out, accumulated, and appears to be in a stage two advance. Just going down to the daily chart, we've gapped up after a really good earnings beating expectations by 22%. That trend appears to have held and looking at my trend strength indicator at 21, there is a good amount of trend and momentum in the stock. And looking at the biggest ETF Disney is in, that's the communication services sector, XLC. That too is in a good strong uptrend and looking at the fundamentals in Disney. Even though quality and value isn't all that great, overall it's not too bad. And with stock fair value only 13% below, I'd say since it's such a strong brand, it deserves a bit of a premium. Shareholder yield is positive, along with business quality score, reasonably low stock crash risk. And given the strength in the underlying sector, and it appearing we're at the start of a stage to advance after that multi-year decline, along with two really good earnings beat, strong momentum in the stock, I'm going to go ahead and rate Disney as cooking. I think it could potentially rise further into the end of the year. Coming in at number seven is General Electric, GE, with 191 billion market cap. Coming out of Boston, Massachusetts, the stock price is up 38.2% year to date. And for 100 years, they've been a diversified conglomerate. However, starting next week, they're splitting off into two stocks, GE Aerospace and GE Venova, their renewable energy unit. And it's for that reason why they've probably performed so well the last couple of years. Stock markets front run that as spin-offs are historically good for the company spinning off going into it and for the spin-offs afterwards. They typically perform well the first couple of years as well. And prior to last year, GE's been a long-term underperformer. And just going out even further to a monthly chart, GE was one of the darlings of the market in the 1990s, run by one of the greatest CEOs of all time, Jack Welsh. Did a fantastic job. However, like all big companies, they eventually tumble over and it's still well off its all-time highs from late 2000. Just going down to the daily chart, has had quite a bit of momentum here. It's been in a long parabolic rise and looking at the underlying sector, industrials, one of the best performing sectors in this market as well. It too is in a strong uptrend. Just looking at the fundamentals on GE, it's looking a little mixed there. It does have good shareholder yield at 6%, good quality with a rating of 10. However, we do have an elevated stock crash risk at eight and fair value at $101 a share. And this one's a tough one because they do have some good fundamentals and obviously momentum. However, I think it might have run too far too fast and we can see that in valuation. So in my opinion, GE's looking a little overcooked to me and I think it has the potential to have a significant pullback. Coming in at number six is Meta Platforms. Now with a market cap of 1.24 trillion, headquartered in Silicon Valley, California, their stock is up 38.22% year to date and we all know what Meta do. They own Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp and are currently pushing into virtual reality and the metaverse as their next growth phase to take them into the future. Looking at a clean weekly chart and like GE, this has been one of the great recoveries in the stock market the last two years. They got hammered down in 2022 as they were investing a lot of money into the metaverse. The growth was flatlining a little bit and the street and everybody got worried. However, Mark Zuckerberg called 2023 the year of efficiency. He fired a bunch of staff, improved the underlying business and won back Wall Street's hearts. And they have rewarded him handsomely, sending his stock to new all-time highs. And just looking at the daily chart, it too had a really good recent earnings broke out on volume. Been in a persistent downtrend. However, it did lose its 50-day VWAP on Thursday. Trend strength is still positive. Still too early to say whether this trend is over or not, we may just be having a bit of a deeper pullback. Over to the fundamentals, value is not too bad. Fair value, only 18% below the current stock price, of which I'd say it does deserve a bit of a premium since it does pretty much run a near monopoly in social media with kind of a call option on owning the metaverse VR industry of the future as well. Shareholder yield is positive, really good quality profitable business. Stock is a little elevated, it's got a bit of crash risk. And again, this is a tough one since it's a little mixed. However, I'm gonna go with a rating of of cooking for Meta. The stock price has so much momentum, it's very profitable stock, and there's more and more buzz building around virtual reality, which I think could keep carrying this stock for the rest of this year. Coming in at number five is Micron Technologies. It's a $130 billion market cap company coming out of Boise, Idaho. Their stock price is up 40.35% year to date, and they're in the semiconductor business, selling memory chips, and they too are enjoying this artificial intelligence bull market. And looking at a clean weekly chart, they've broken out to all-time highs. 
after having this big rounded bottom and just looking at the daily chart they recently gapped up on a blowout earnings quarter trend strength's gone back to positive the underlying sector of semiconductors still in a well-defined strong uptrend and even though the technicals are looking good the fundamentals aren't stacking up that great we've only got the momentum factor green on the chart here everything else is red fair value it's $71 a share negative shareholder yield negative business quality score and approaching elevated levels of crash risk and even though I know the semiconductor sector is on fire I have to go with my fundamentals on this one and rate micron technology as cooked based mostly on valuation and quality its fundamentals aren't that great 130 billion market cap revenue was down 15 billion last year they actually lost money I think they've just been caught up in the semiconductor craze which still could take the stock price further. However, I think it is vulnerable to a big correction. Coming in at number four is Coinbase, 64 billion market cap company. Coming out of Willington, Delaware, stock price is up 53.23% year to date. And they had the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the United States, allowing anyone to go in there and buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, other things in a digital wallet. Looking at the weekly chart, they too. Look to be in that stage two advance after a stage one accumulation. Daily chart has good technicals as well. Had a really good recent earnings quarter. Trend strength is positive. And I'd say the sector most related to Coinbase is actually Bitcoin itself, of which is in a technical uptrend. However, it looks to be potentially consolidating here a little bit. And just looking at the fundamentals, the only green things we've got on this chart is the momentum factor, business quality score, elevated stock crash risk at nine. This indicator can't go above 10, but what's really bad is its valuation. My stock fair value has it $121 a share, and I can see why. Currently got a market cap of 64 billion, even though its revenue last year was 3 billion. So that's a price to sales over 20. And if you just step back for a bit and look at this holistically, this is a cryptocurrency exchange with a market cap of $64 billion. And cryptocurrency is still yet to be fully accepted and regulated by the US government and mainstream at large. The company's only been on the market for a couple of years. And if you compare that 64 billion market cap to the NASDAQ, one of the biggest and best stock exchanges in the world that's been around since the 1970s, home to some of the largest, most powerful companies in the world, it has a market cap of 36 billion. So imagine you're a super wealthy person and you had 70 odd billion to invest. Would you rather own Coinbase or would you rather own two NASDAQs? And for that reason, I think Coinbase is really overvalued. I'm going to go ahead and rate it as Cook, meaning I think it has the potential to crash back down below $100 a share. Even though crypto is really hot stuff at the moment, for sure it could go higher before we have that inevitable correction. Coming in at number three needs little introduction. One of the hottest and most important stocks of today's day and age is none other than Nvidia. Now with a 2.26 trillion market cap headquarter. In Santa Clara, California, stock price is up a whopping 83.49% year to date. And they make graphic processing units, GPUs. Originally for computer gamers, a lot of big companies figured out their GPUs were great for running AI applications. They can process a lot of data really quickly that AI needs. And you could kind of think of them as the picks and shovels provider of the AI boom and their growth rates have been nothing short of phenomenal and that is reflected in the stock price steaming up to all-time highs after consolidating for the second half of last year we had a strong breakout right out of the gate of 2024 and we can see that in the daily chart really strong persistent trend strength and when this trend strength is positive you should ignore the red and green arrows because they're designed for when the trend strength is orange for example when we go back here you want to do mean reversion trades using these arrows the buy sell bands, reversal signals, DSI, when the market is in ranging mode. All markets go from ranging to trending. And when the market goes trending, you wanna take note of these buy signals, they're momentum thrusts. And we've just got a big momentum sell signal on this bearish engulfing candle here, indicating that momentum could be stalling. However, it's still too early to say whether this uptrend is over. It's got a lot of momentum. And so this is not the type of stock and market you wanna do mean reversion trades in. And looking at their fundamentals, pretty good overall. Stock fair value is only 15% below at 780. And we can see the fair value of the stock is actually improved a lot this year. It's actually better value now than what it was early last year because its revenue and profits have accelerated even further. It's obviously a great quality business. However, stock crash risk is high at 9.55, meaning if the market does have a pullback, Nvidia just being as hot as it is, as many people in it could experience some large volatility. And we know the semiconductor sector is in an uptrend. Its other fundamentals of growth, quality are really good, rated great. And I know this might surprise a lot of people, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a rating of cooking, meaning I think this has further to go. 
If it hits $1,200 a share, it'll officially be the largest stock in the world. And I've got a feeling this AI boom is going to take the number one AI stock to the number one biggest stock in the world, even though it could experience a bit of volatility and pullback before we hit that. This thing has too much growth and momentum to try and step in front of it, in my opinion. Coming in at number two is MicroStrategy. $29 billion market cap coming out of Vienna in the state of Virginia. Its stock price is up a huge 146.15% year to date. And they basically offer a legacy enterprise software product that's been around for many years. However, they're really known for their Bitcoin holding. As the founder of the company, Michael Saylor, has pretty much turned it into a proxy for Bitcoin. And they actually own 1% of all Bitcoin out there now. There's a look on the weekly chart. Absolutely exploded this year with Bitcoin hitting all-time highs as well. And it's been closely mirroring and even significantly outperforming Bitcoin. However, if you go out to a monthly chart, going back to the late 90s, Michael Saylor is known for pumping and dumping, pumping up stock, jumping onto the latest craze, and then selling many shares in the process. He's been charged with fraud several times in his career by the SEC and others, accused of tax evasion, and now spends all of his time going on media and podcasts all day, hyping up Bitcoin and his stock, while at the same time selling tens of millions of dollars of his own stock. Along with the rest of the board of directors, whilst they're not doing any buying at all. Looking at the daily chart, it has gone absolutely parabolic this last couple of months. It's getting really volatile now. Just on Thursday, it was down over 11%. Huge amount of volume and participation. This is constantly near the top of the leaderboard in both stock and option trading each day, even though it only has a market cap around 30 billion. And it rates really poorly on my fundamental indicators. Stock fair value, $895 a share. Negative shareholder yield because they don't pay a dividend and Michael Saylor's strategy is to constantly sell more stock to the market along with debt and then turn around and use that to buy Bitcoin. That's why shareholder yield is deeply negative at minus 18%. Looking back in history, companies that have such low shareholder yield historically end up delivering long-term poor returns to shareholders. Apart from the quality factor, which is good, everything else is bad, especially stock crash risk at 9.4. That's really elevated. This indicator can't go above 10. And so I have no other option but to rate micro strategy as cooked. The market cap near 30 billion. The underlying business doesn't even do 500 million a year in revenue and it's been flatlining for five years. And their Bitcoin holdings are only currently valued around 15 billion. So if you strip out that, you've got about 14 billion left plus the debt of a couple of billion, implying that the underlying business is worth 16, 17 billion, which it's nowhere near worth that. So right now it's just run away on a crazy squeeze. And I'd say that's because Wall Street hedge funds, not too many people want to short this. And meme traders and Michael Saylor have done a great job at hyping it up. However, it won't last forever. For sure, it could still keep going higher. Could easily hit $3,000 a share before the madness ends. However, I'm rating it as cooked because I think it's highly likely by the end of the year, it could trade below $1,000 a share again. And before I get into the number one, top performing stock this year, along with my rating on it. If you'd like to get all my custom technical indicators you see on this chart, along with all my fundamental indicators and a bunch of other indicators I've developed over the last five years as well, including sector trends table indicator, the sector analysis indicator, and my portfolio monitor indicator, 25 custom indicators in total. If you'd like to get lifetime access to them, click the link below this video, because for just one more day, I'm doing an Easter special, offering them all for sale for the one-time fee of $239. For most people, just one or two extra winning trades will cover the cost of that, and that includes future access to all other indicators I make free of charge, no ongoing costs, a seven day money back guarantee, allowing you to test them out risk free. And it's gonna be quite some time before I offer a discount on my indicators again. So head on over to my website, clickcapital.io and get access to all of my custom indicators for TradingView today. And after checking out, when you load up your TradingView platform, you just come up to your indicators page, click on invite only, and they'll all be there. And I'll also send you links to all of my chart layouts. So they automatically load into your TradingView platform as well. And my 25 custom indicators work on assets from all around the world. Doesn't matter if you're into US stocks, ETFs, futures, you're in Europe, Asia, wherever you are, you can use my indicators on any stock or asset from around the world in a multiple time frames as well. So click the link below this video to learn more about this special offer before it expires tomorrow. And coming in at number one, the top performing large cap liquid stock this year. And of course it's related to AI, that super microcomputer, SMCI, $59 billion market cap company coming out of San Jose, California. Stock price is up a whopping 260.73% year to date. 
and they basically just provide hardware server racks for GPUs, AI chips to run on top of. And they are riding the coattails of this AI boom very well. Just looking at a weekly chart, what a rip it's been on. Been in a bull market for several years now. And just like Nvidia, it consolidated for the second half of last year and just ripped right out of the gate. And just looking on the daily chart here, it's obviously been in this really strong uptrend. However, we're getting big signs, momentum is weakening. You can see the trend strength coming down. Big bearish divergence on the DSI, along with this big sell candle that's kind of still a little bit in play here. We've only closed above that a couple of days. And looking at the fundamentals, it's obviously got good momentum and growth. It's a little richly valued, fair value at $710 a share. And stock crash risk really elevated 9.7. And I remember for a long time, SMCI was undervalued persistently by the market, even though it had good growing revenue. In the second half of 2022, my stock fair value indicator had it around $200 a share back when it was trading around $60, $70 a share. And the stock fair value continued to decrease even into 2023. Had fair value around $420, keeping you in the trade. As that's a good target to have when you buy an undervalued stock, is whenever the stock reaches fair value, you can get out, or you can use a trailing stop indicator like my trend candles. And whenever that goes red, you can get out, or if it hits fair value, you can take off half, trail the other half, or things like that, just to help keep you systematic and disciplined in your investing. And this is a real tough one as well. $59 billion market cap on revenue of $7 billion. Revenue is growing good. And don't get me wrong, I wouldn't be surprised if this still has further to run. However, at 260% performance year to date, I'm going to have to go ahead and give Supermicro the rating as being a bit overcooked here. I think it has potential to have quite a significant pullback come the end of the year. However, that's a close call given its growth rate. It's not ridiculously overvalued like MicroStrategy and Coinbase, but I still wouldn't call it cheap either. And so there we have it guys, the top 10 performing large cap liquid stocks this year, obviously dominated by semiconductors and tech stocks in general. We only really had three non-tech stocks in there. That was the oil stock MPC, consumer stock Disney, and the industrial General Electric. So obviously technically in a bull market, we've got a lot of sectors increasing now. It's not just tech stocks and semiconductors. We've got industrials, home builders, aerospace and defense, all these other things ripping up to new all-time highs. All of these stocks can run further. Some are just more fundamentally overvalued than not. However, especially in stocks like MicroStrategy, even though it is clearly overvalued, right now momentum, sediment, and hype has got a hold of this thing. So it could still have further to run. However, I'd be very surprised if this valuation holds up for long, especially if Bitcoin has a large correction. The house of cards that is MicroStrategy could come tumbling down. And that's a wrap for this video. Thank you very much for tuning in. And if you found some value, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to get lifetime access to all 25 of my custom indicators for TradingView, then click the link below this video and take advantage of this special offer before it expires tomorrow. Thanks very much and speak again soon.